Hi there and welcome back to chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug and in this video we're learning about five types of chemical reactions. If you were here for the last video we learned about some of the basics, some of the fundamentals of chemical reactions including these special characters that you see here on the screen that are often used in chemical equations. If you're new here take a look around my channel. I'd like to welcome you. Uh, don't forget to check out the playlists. That's where the action is. This is the place for all things honors chemistry and AP chemistry. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. That way uh, you won't miss a thing in all things high school chemistry. Well, as we move on and talk about the five types of reactions, the first type I want to show you is called synthesis. In a synthesis reaction, we have this format right here where we have uh, two or sometimes more than two reactants and they combine to form one product. This is the essential format of a synthesis equation or synthesis reaction. Sometimes there are some teachers or some chemistry textbooks that call this combination. That's the same thing. Synthesis and combination reactions are the same thing. And the way that you can recognize a synthesis reaction is that it always has one product. So if you see a chemical reaction and it has multiple reactants but one product, it's a good sign that it's a synthesis process. Now here's an example of a synthesis reaction. We have some calcium oxide here, solid, being reacted with water in its liquid form, and the product is calcium hydroxide solid. So once again, notice that we had two reactants and they combine to make one product. So that's a good sign of synthesis. Now the second type of reaction that I'd like to show you today is called decomposition. This is the complete opposite of a synthesis process. This is where we start out with one reactant and it literally decomposes or it breaks down to form two or sometimes more than two products. So it's AB yields A plus B. So the way you can recognize a decomposition reaction is that it always has one reactant. So once again, it has one substance on the left side of the arrow and it breaks down into two or more products. So here's a good example of a decomposition process. We start out with H2CO3, a carbonic acid in its aqueous form, and it decomposes. Notice how it breaks down into two substances. We have water, and that should be liquid because water is not a solid in this case most likely, and carbon dioxide is going to be a gas. And so here we have a good example of a decomposition process. Now the third type of chemical reaction I want to show you is called single replacement. Now this is a little bit different. Some chemistry textbooks or teachers call this single displacement. Same thing, it's just a different way of saying it. Here is the essential uh, uh, format for a single replacement reaction. A plus BC yields AC plus B. And so what you have here is A is an element BC is a compound of some sort. And then A is literally kicking out B and getting with B's partner. And so A gets with C, and then B has been kicked out, and it's all by itself. And so in a single replacement reaction, you're always going to have one element plus one compound as the reactants. And then, like I said, one of those elements or, or that element is going to kick out something from the compound. So here's a good example of a single replacement reaction. Here we have magnesium, and this is magnesium in its solid state, is reacting with a solution of lead 2 nitrate. And we can see that the magnesium is literally kicking out the lead from the compound. It's replacing it. So magnesium gets with the nitrates. We have magnesium nitrate solution. And then lead has been kicked out. So lead solid is the other product there. So here's a good example of a single replacement reaction, an element plus a compound. Now the fourth type of chemical reaction that I want to show you is called double replacement. Once again, this is sometimes called double displacement. Same thing. In a double replacement reaction, this is the format that you're going to have. AB plus CD yields AD plus CB. And what these compounds are, AB and CD are both ionic compounds. And basically what's happening is the ions are literally swapping partners. And so A was with B and C was with D. Well, A gets with D and C gets with B. They literally have done the old switcheroo here and they've swapped their partners. And so that's what double replacement looks like. That's the format for that. Now here is a good example 
of a double replacement reaction. We have silver nitrate, and that's a solution, AgNO3, and then we have magnesium chloride, so that's a solution as well, aqueous, and the two ions swap partners. So the silver, Ag, gets with chloride, Cl, to make silver chloride, and that's a solid, and then Mg, magnesium, gets with nitrate ions to make magnesium nitrate. So they've just swapped their partners around here. Now, if you were to actually carry this reaction out in the lab, what you would see is two solutions being added together, you know, because they're both aqueous, and you would see a solid being formed, a white solid of silver chloride. In chemistry, this solid that's formed from the addition of two solutions, two aqueous solutions, is called a precipitate. So you might say that this AgCl is a precipitate in this process. We talked about that a little bit in the last video. Now, that leaves us one more, the fifth type of chemical reaction. This is a very specific type. This is called combustion. And in a combustion process, or at least this type of combustion process we're talking about here, this is the essential format for the combustion reaction. We have a compound that contains carbon and hydrogen and, and possibly oxygen that reacts with O2, oxygen gas, to produce carbon dioxide and water. And this compound here that contains the carbon and hydrogen and possibly the oxygen is called a hydrocarbon. And so the essential format of a combustion process is a hydrocarbon reacts with O2, oxygen gas, to produce carbon dioxide and water. So in any, what's called a complete combustion process, this is what's going to happen. So here's a good example of a combustion process. CH4, which is methane gas, often called the natural gas, is burned, and when anything is burned, that just means it's being reacted with O2, with oxygen gas. And the products, as you can see here, are carbon dioxide and water. So good example of a combustion process. Now, let's take a look at a couple examples here and see if we can classify some simple chemical equations. Let's take a look at this one here. We have Cl2 plus Ki yields I2 plus KCl. Can you tell which of the five types this is? Hopefully, you said single replacement. And it's single replacement because we have an element, chlorine, being added to a compound, potassium iodide. And the element is literally kicking out the iodine. K gets with Cl, and we have the iodine that's our product. So a uh, single replacement for that one. How about this second example? What type of chemical reaction does that look like? Well, if you said decomposition, you are correct. And the reason for that is that we have one reactant, and it is literally decomposing. It's breaking down to form two products, magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide. How about this third example? Which type of reaction does that look like? We have two ionic compounds, and they're being added together, and they're essentially swapping partners, aren't they? The lead gets with chloride in one of the products over here, and the potassium gets with nitrate to make the other product. So this is a good example of a double replacement reaction. Here's the fourth example. Which type of reaction does this look like? Well, if you said synthesis, you are correct again, because we have two reactants, water and sulfur trioxide, combining to make that one product, that sulfuric acid. How about this one? We have what looks to be some sort of a carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen containing compound reacting with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. Well, that's a good sign of a combustion reaction, isn't it? So here we have the five types of chemical equations, the five types of chemical reactions. Hopefully, you can look at any type of these chemical reactions that your teacher could give you or, or that you could find in a textbook and classify which of the five types of reactions you're dealing with. Hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please slam that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at something that some of you may have noticed. It certainly seems like we have a few atoms that are uh, disappearing in some of these equations. Somehow, like in this equation, we went from two chlorine atoms to one. And we went from one iodine atom to two. That's not really possible, is it? There's something we have to do to these equations. This is something called balancing equations. And that's what we're going to learn about in the next video. So stay tuned.
Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you then.